we're here with Judy, and uh, we were just actually in the in the high court. Supreme it's court. A, it's an appeal court or Supreme Court, and we were talking actually with your son. Was he on some kind of an internet connection, or somehow he was in what was he in Western Australia? Or no, he's in Canberra, the Alexander McConaughey Centre. He's in the jail. Jail. Yeah. And so then we were trying to do some some simple. Uh, appeal to say that can there be some way I can have a legal representation and if not that can I somehow I have a some uh, leave of absence from my my uh, jail sentence so I can go out and seek legal, legal representation so Judy tell us a little bit about this ongoing battle what what happened um, yes, we've been going through both of the courts, the Supreme Court on Appeals and to the uh, Magistrates Court over the last two years um, through different uh, offences and non-offences, which he has and hasn't pleaded not guilty or guilty to, injustices are being done. Up until certain times he had legal representations, but because the, represent the lawyers weren't actually listening to him um, in his defences of what he wanted to say, these were not put across and so he fired one of the lawyers. Now he's been going to law society people, he's been going to other lawyers trying to access them. Um, there's so many injustices that have been done through these courts and um, in February of last year, 2011, both of us, my son Luke Marsh um, on the 14th and myself on the 15th of February 2011 renounced our Australian citizenship to become Indigenous people disenfranchised with the government of Australia in the ways that they conduct their laws and their policies and what have all the um, recommendations from stolen generation, from uh, raw, uh, Aboriginal deaths in custody, all the reports that have been done uh, so much this person can't even get legal representation and at that an Aboriginal legal representation unfortunately. I tried today um, to get Aboriginal representation from some of the people back at the Aboriginal tent embassy. Uh, everyone's too busy doing their own stuff to even look at this little person that's um, renounced his citizenship um, who doesn't like the laws of Australia to not self-determine himself and to have a just case where things aren't being lobbed on that he doesn't have any idea of laws. So we're in a status quo at the moment, there's different stays of appeal, there's different different things of law which both of us cannot comprehend. So so let's just get the little background and it sounds like there was a scuffle or something with the police and somehow that you know when they people were, are pulling against each other then uh, somebody hits somebody and somebody else hits somebody else. Yes and, and as as is always the case in Aboriginal uh, complaints with uh, Aboriginal people police are always listened to. We've got no the person perjured himself couple of weeks later after he'd already been on the stand and told this new story a couple of weeks later. It wasn't even brought out on the first instance but on the second instance after he'd been sentenced so or just before he was sentenced. Look it's all getting a bit iffy iffy and our things aren't being well, done just properly. Just to say the background is this a real serious case? I mean is he a thief or is he a, uh, well, you know, any kind of a thing or was he just in a, a barroom brawl? or? Uh, no maybe? it's a bit of um, I think it started off with an argument with his partner and uh, someone rang up the police and even at just that domestic time, violence? just a little bit of domestic violence, well I won't say a little bit of domestic violence, yeah, we've got to I stand mean, up with that but but he's, gone he's to court. in a couple of years and he can't really, everything goes around and around. Yes. There's a lots of irregularities in the case and it doesn't seem that important. I was so surprised that well, uh, in one way the Australian courts would listen to everybody and, and not shut everyone up, but then they don't think it's that important. You know, you could play cat and mouse and not have a, a legal representation and they wouldn't just offer you one immediately. Yes. That's, that's true. And it's a pity it, and it's sad. Even the possibility to be let out for a couple of hours under some sort of... Jurisdiction. Yes. Kind of look, I know things haven't been done like this before, but why, why can't we just look at these things? You know, you have weekend detentions. Well, um, oh, I know it's going off the mark, but 
We just need to do things differently. This person needs legal representation. He doesn't need the white mob anymore, the Wadjala people. He needs an Aboriginal lawyer to be able to help defend his case on a, on a perjury. We are Aboriginal people always in front of these courts with, um, in respect to tell the truth, be honest, don't do this, don't do that, don't burgle, don't, 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 don't. Well, people, the Australian government has done a great injustice to the Aboriginal people of this country and to a lot of Indigenous or Aboriginal Indigenous people of other countries. It can't keep going on. It needs to change. I asked the judge a few things in there and really I can't remember what I said, but you know, things have to change. She had this chance to maybe make some change. Well, it's been said outside or inside the court now. They'll look at it, see if it makes any difference, but will it? Most probably not. The machinations of the government and the laws of appeal just don't work for Aboriginal people, so we keep getting locked up. What was the royal deaths in custody? Why, why, why? Why aren't things changing? Why can't we have a little bit of say and a bit of help? If people we can't get legal representation, only unless we plead guilty. Now, if we, if Luke has admitted that he, he said something about headbutting, he didn't headbutt, it's in files. It was not on any of the manuscripts that he or the judge had in front of him and maybe the DPP. But yet, this police person on um, another occasion said later that he did headbutt him. Now, who's telling the truth? We've had so many people. So then, just to say, what kind of sentence do you get for a uh, uh, headbutt on a police officer? That's it. Or oh, It was just um, Several years resisting what, arrest. Yeah. Um, maybe too much loudness or whatever, you know, yeah. I, I can't think of it at the moment. My head's just turning away with everything. Right. It's, but I mean, did he get, what was his sentence? Yes. Um, total of nine months. And over here in this court, in the magistrate's court, there is supposed to be a Aboriginal sentence circling, a circle sentencing group. Um, he applied for that nearly a year and a half ago, a year, yeah, nearly a year and a half ago to actually go before the circle sentencing mob. And because it's not set in concrete uh, between the magistrates, the Supreme Court maybe, and the circle sentencing people, nothing has been done. The judge, Dugan, actually sentenced him, um, but Justice Dingwall said that shouldn't have happened. We should have waited for circle sentencing. Now, we've got all these magistrates all doing their own different things because things haven't been set in law. Now, if things aren't set in law, how can they judge? It's up to the justice of the day or the judge of the day because there's nothing instigated in stone in foundation of law, the circle sentencing, that things become as they are. And Luke hasn't been put towards circle sentencing. We don't even know who's on the circle sentencing. Who are these people? Why aren't they standing up? It's, um, we need to look at things because justice is not being done properly here. And you're gonna have more people in jails, more people not represented, no money to be able to help to be able to do these things. So you had a strategy that was to renounce your citizenship and to renounce Luke's citizenship. Luke did it himself and I did it myself too. And how did that strategy work or how was it proposed to work or what? You know, well, where, apparently where it, it, it would be good to be able to sit down at the table instead of a courtroom and be able to delve into these matters and be able to talk about these things. But even if you were a renowned citizen, and wouldn't you be still a foreign, a foreign citizen and foreign to this government? Okay, and so now it's up to international law. But you would need an embassy or something to. Well, we have an embassy, and uh, I did actually go and ask our West Australian mob whether they could help represent me. I've been trying for the last day and a half for representation from Aboriginal people that are here. There's Paul Coe, there's De Dennis Eglinton, there's other senior uh, lawyer people from Sydney. There's people there that can help, but I just haven't been able to get across to them that this is a matter of renunciation of citizenship and where do we take it from there? I can see it being taken a lot further than what it's been done today, because it means sitting down at the table looking at the laws of incompatibility that have, been, that have been made for the last 200 years against us, all because of land and the experiment of jails because they had nowhere else to put their people. Well, we're not in the jail 
we're not in the business of the jail industry. We are the industry of the jails and we need to get out of that. Why have the, all those commissions and all those consultations with people, um, all that money being spent on pieces of paper that thick, lots of consultations around the country. Why is this not changing? Well, I've made a difference to be able to try and make the difference of non-citizenship and so has he, but he just can't get there and neither can I. How do we enforce our non-citizenship? So anyhow, what I saw today, I mean, in a way it was shocking because they were just playing cat and mouse That's and, it. and denying and just playing a silly game and, and spending that two hours of legal time, which must be thousands of dollars. But Absolutely. For really no, no possible good or use and, and just to say, hey, you can do it again. And, uh, but you'll have to do it better because it'll be a higher court. And he says, well, then I'll need legal representation for sure. And then they said, well, you're a sharp cookie. You'll probably be able to figure it out. Yeah. It's very, very, very obtuse, you know. But very I intimidating. Can see, see that nothing's really happening in there. They're playing a pat little game in a way. And they're all, all there. And they are polite. And they are, you know, something's going, something's right there too. But uh, maybe from the outside, somehow we'll go on. YouTube will find some group, we'll explain what's happening and uh, hopefully uh, we, Lucas looks like a wonderful man and for him to just waste some years in, in jail and for uh, all of Australia to pay for that uh, doesn't seem uh, very productive whatsoever. It's such a waste of time and so much money has been involved in all these cases. Um, it's it's amazing how they can spend money on to uphold the law when they can't even get it, get it right and uphold the injustices of the law. We're still in incompatibility of law. The whole constitution was illegal. It's been made up, legislated, made up, legislated to keep us from having our business, which is responsibility to land and looking after it, and our people, just like a lot of the Aboriginal Indigenous mobs around the world. They are losing lands to mining, they are losing lands to deforestation, they are lo losing waterways to uh, pollution through saltiness, the acidity, through what uh, modern civilization has created to this day. More concrete to keep it all warm. Our ice, our environment is destructing. What are we going to do about it? If we can't look after people and have proper representation, then how the hell are we going to look after the earth? Thank you so much, Judy, for bringing us in into the court. Thank you for opening our eyes to what's going on. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you and to try to write things that are uh, in a very slow and unproductive momentum. Sometimes it's good to be slow because it takes time to do things properly instead of rush business, which helps construe the injustices. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard.